uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this uh, Saint Hume Society webinar. Talk. It's glad to meet you on Monday. Uh, before we start the talk today, uh, please allow me to quickly introduce the uh, Saint Hume 2024 conference. It is the tenth international conference on technological advances of Saint Hume and surface coatings. This conference is about uh, it is a biannual event of knowledge exchange and uh, interactive platform for researchers and engineers from industry research labs and academics. This thing film 2024 will be held from 15 to uh, 19 July 2024 in Singapore. So this conference, uh, it covers a wide range of topics. It will bring together new develop developments on all aspects related to the processing, characterization, and the applications of thin film and the surface coatings. If you are working on thin films and coatings, I'm sure you will find a, uh, a symposium that matches very well with your research area. So uh, we also publish papers, and this year uh, the selected papers will be published in Surface and Coating Technologies. It's a, a SCI Q1 journal, and the, we know that uh, this journal is one of the top journals in the field of surface and coatings. Uh, all the submit papers still need to undergo the peer review process. Here are some important dates. Uh, if you plan to, if you consider uh, attending this conference and want to give a presentation, uh, you may need to note down some important dates. For example, like the abstract submission is due in the 15th of February. So it will do like in two and a half months. So it's, uh, I think it's a Chinese New Year time, so I would suggest you do it earlier. So um, finally, I would like to give a quick introduction about symposium number seven, which is the nanostructures, nanocomposite, and nanoparticles. This symposium will be chaired by Professor Sam Zhang and myself. So this symposium uh, focuses on recent developments in both fundamental and uh, applied science of nanostructured thin films and coatings. Particular attention will be given to the design, processing, characterization, and properties, performance, as well as applications of nanostructured thin films and coatings. Uh, when I say the nanostructured thin film and the coatings, uh, it includes a lot, like nanocrystalline, heterogeneous, structured, graded, or gradient, and also nanocomposite, multi-layered, as well as a porous film and the coatings. So if you are working on medium or high entropy alloy coatings, including the ceramic coatings, uh, you can also submit abstract to this symposium. And as you can see, uh, we cover the processing and the characterization, the processing structure, property, performance relationships, as well as the uh, uh, applications. So, um, yeah, if you're working on the um, same film and coatings, you're more than welcome to join us in this conference. Look forward to meeting you there. Now let's start the talk today. Uh, engineering approach. We know that a uh, surface degradation of engineering components that are operating in harsh environments, such as high temperature, high stress, and the highly corrosive environments, is one of the primary concerns of many, many industries. So therefore, protective coatings are widely used in a wide range of industries, such as aerospace, defense, energy, and the mining industry. So it's to improve the surface life performance and the safety of many critical components. 
in doing so, um, it will reduce the downtime of this equipment and also reduce the associated cost. But often the problem with such coating is that they are often made of ceramic-based materials. We know that ceramic is highly brittle, so they're very fragile and stressed. So what's going to happen is the premature failure. This premature failure can affect safety and lead to negative economic consequence. As such, there is a pressing need to develop more durable protective coatings. That means the coatings need to be not only strong, but also tough. So they are highly resistant to fracture, not like the ceramic one, the, uh, they, they often fracture catastrophically. So we know compared to ceramics, metals, they are ductile and highly resistant to fracture. Uh, we can see from the stress strain curves that um, metals, this blue one, uh, this green one, sorry, uh, metals show high toughness, but they are not as strong as ceramics. If we want to develop strong and tough metallic coatings, we will need to strengthen the metals to increase the strength. And at the same time, we can't lose too much ductility because we can see the toughness is just this green area below this stress strain curve. However, as we have learned from the material test book that most conventional strengthening approach, they can strengthen the material, but at an expense of ductility. So that means the stronger materials are usually brittle. This is the strength ductility trade-off. That has been lasting uh, for many years in the metallic materials. And the ultimate goal of structural material, including the protective coatings we just talked about, is to make material stronger without compromising ductility. That means for coatings, in addition to hardness, they also need to have the ability to undergo plastic deformation. So they can be uh, strong and tough. So our research aims to overcome this uh, strength ductility trade-off, developing material with enhanced mechanical property through mat stability engineering. Uh, the coating that I have been working on are high entropy alloy coatings. You may have heard of uh, high entropy alloys. They are a rapid emerging class of alloys that are quite different from conventional alloys. We know that conventional alloys is usually based on one principal elements. However, the high entropy alloy incorporates multiple principal elements, all in a high concentration. Imagine these elements as different fruits. The only juice will be the conventional oil oil, this one here. Well, this mixed juice will be the high entropy oil oil. We know that the mixed juice, they have more balanced nutrition and flavors. So that's the high entropy oil oil. With such a novel alloying strategy, high entropy oil oil offers a new avenue for realizing exceptional mechanical, physical, and chemical properties. High entropy alloys show promise in overcoming the strength ductility trade-off that is common in metallic material. Therefore, they, they, offer, they also offer a compelling prospect for long-lasting surface protection. But to overcome the strength ductility trade-off, we do need to apply some structural and um, mechanism design such as uh, mat stability engineering. Now let's have a look at how the mat stability engineering strategy works. Basically, it tunes phase stability. So um, as you can tell from its name, mat stability, uh, the word mat stable means something that is not very stable. So in contrast to the conventional alloy design, we try to achieve the stable phase in this one, we try to can occur. 
So the idea here are uh, basically it tunes phase stability to promote formation of desired phase structure, such as the uh, dual phase structure, and to trigger the formation mechanism. Normally, it trip and twip. You may have heard of trip stew and twip stew. The trip is transformation induced plasticity, and the twip is twinning induced plasticity. So to um, so the one here we is uh, we try to trigger the phase transformation and the deformation twinning. As a result, we will achieve high strength and the ductility. Let's take an example. Um, take an example for uh, if we're working on an uh, HCP or FCC structure, we know that stacking for the energy is very important because all this deformation mechanism is closely related with this stack or with this stacking for the energy. So if your material has a high stacking for the energy, the deformation mechanism, uh, the deformation will be mediated by dislocation gliding. If the stacking for the energy is very low, the phase transformation will occur. If you have something in between, the deformation twinning will um, carry out the plasticity. So we, when we tune the phase stability, it's important that we pay attention to this stacking for the energy. The max stability engineering approach is not something new. It has already been widely used in high magnet steel and the titanium alloy to promote strain induced phase transformation. High entropy alloy are very suitable for applying max stability engineering. Since uh, the high entropy alloy concept it widens the alloy design window for tailoring phase stability stand for the energy and also the associated deformation mechanism. So for the phase stability, uh, the met stability engineering approach has been successfully applied into several high entropy alloy systems. For example, uh, this, this is the most famous one. Um, this iron magnesium cobalt chromium met stable high entropy alloy. So the idea here is to reduce the stability of the FCC phase through reducing the magnet content. The red color here is the FCC phase and the blue color here is the HCP phase. As you can see, um, if we reduce the magnet content, we're reducing the stacking for the energy because the magnet is the FCC stabilizer. So less magnets means the uh, uh, FCC phase. So that is the idea of the mass stabi stability engineering. In doing so, we uh, we can form this dual phase structure, both uh, FCC and HCP. And uh, another benefit of this structure is that during the deformation, because the FCC is mass stable, and during the deformation, it will transform to HCP. We know that HCP is harder, so it will cause dynamic strain hardening. That will increase the ductility of the material. So as a result, we can see uh, this is the mass stable high entropy alloy, and this is the single phase one. So we can see both strength and the ductility has been significantly increased due to the dual phase microstructure and also the transformation hardening. And normally to apply the met stability engineering in high entropy alloys, the fit stability is tuned by adjusting the concentration of metallic alloying elements. Like the example I showed in the previous slides, another way uh, to tune the phase stability is to add interstitial elements. But normally it's a very low concentration. We will talk about this later. Uh, however, in our work, we added a large amount of interstitial nitrogen to tailor the phase stability. The reason of doing that is in addition to Phase metastability. Um, 
So the phase mass stability will give us dual phase structure, the formation twinning, and the phase transformation. And in addition to all this benefit, we will also benefit from the massive solid solution strengthening caused by high nitrogen intake. Let's um, talk about more about this interstitial solid solution strengthening. So adding interstitial elements to high entropy alloy was based on a few considerations. The first one, obviously, is about the solid solution strengthening. We know that the addition of interstitial elements enhance the solid solution strengthening through causing this lattice distortion, right? Because it's changed the uh, configuration of this lattice structure. And in addition to that, interstitial elements can also tune the phase stability. So it is possible to achieve excellent mechanical property through mass stability engineering by controlling the interstitial content. Medium entropy alloys, they use very expensive alloying elements, right, such as nickel and the chromium. We know that the application of high entropy alloy are greatly limited by their high cost. So to reduce the cost, we can adding these much less expensive interstitial elements, such as carbon, nitrogen, or oxygen. However, the challenge is that interstitial elements have a very low solubility in high entropy alloys, usually less than 2% to atomic percent. Um, what is going to happen if you add more than 2 atomic percent? The problem is you are going to have brittle ceramics. This brittle ceramic precipitate starts to form, which decreases the material's deformability, makes the material brittle. So it comes to a question uh, because we want to, um, if we can only add less than two, per two atomic percent interstitial elements, it will not uh, help us to reduce the cost. And also if we want to enhance the solid solution strengthening and tune the phase stability, we may need to uh, increase the amount of interstitial elements. Then it comes to a question that, is there a way that we can dissolve a high concentration of interstitial elements in high entropy alloy without the formation of brittle ceramics? The answer is yes. Magnetron sputtering can do it. Um, if you're working on thin film and coatings, you should be quite familiar with the magnetron sputtering. It is a physical vapor deposition technique used for depositing high quality coatings. It's a bottom up approach. So it's a very important, uh, the rapid quenching effect because it's a bottom up approach. It deposits a coating layer by layer, atomic layer. So the cooling rate is super fast. The high cooling rate will surprise the diffusion. And the, if we surprise the diffusion, we will surprise the formation of nitride because the nitride formation, the metal elements and the nitrogen, they need to come together to form the nitride, right? So if we surprise the diffusion, we are going to form the random or disordered solid solution phase. That means we can dissolve a large amount of interstitial elements. Right, this rapid quenching effect promotes the solution phase, supersaturated with nitrogen, without forming any nitride. So it's going to, um, this is what we would like to achieve. The, all these metal elements in the high entropy alloy, they just randomly distributed and 
this pink nitrogen atom, they just sit at the interstitial sites just randomly. They don't form nitride. Then we prepare uh, five high entropy oil coatings at different, we just use this magnetron sputtering technique. And we prepare the coatings at different nitrogen gas flow rate. We put it at 4, 8, 10, 15, and 20 SCCN. And we know the different nitrogen gas flow rate will give us uh, different nitrogen content in the coating. So uh, this is a, a schematic illustration of the magnetron sputtering. I'm not going of random solid solution. We know normally the higher the nitrogen flow rate, the higher the nitrogen concentration in the coating. So here I'm trying to use a composition of these five coatings. As we can see, the nitrogen content, this blue line here, uh, this green line here, the nitrogen content increases from about seven atomic percent to about 30 atomic percent when the nitrogen gas flow rate increase from four to 20 SCCM. And at the same time, as the nitrogen content increase, the, all the metal content decreases. But the ratio between these four metal elements agrees very well with the target composition. So we have, um, like we have included such a high content of nitrogen in the coating, about 30%. Are we going to form a nitride? So we need to examine the microstructure. So here are the microstructure of the five coatings with increasing nitrogen content. They also show uh, column nanograins. So from the low mag particles of nitride. It looks like we have successfully dissolved a massive amount of nitrogen into the FCC and the HCP lattice. But to confirm the solid solution nature, we have performed XRD EDS mapping. This EDS mapping at micro scale and also EUS mapping at nano scale. All these results are and this uh, EDS and the EOs were performed at the N20 sample, the sample with the highest nitrogen content. If this one doesn't show any nitride, uh, all the others should be solid solution phase. So we can see that all these results indicate homogeneous elemental distribution, and there is no nitride formation. Even if, even if the nitrogen content for this one N20, we, uh, we know the nitrogen content is as high as 29 atomic percent. So these are, always, um, they're not yet nitride, but should be described as disordered solid solution, uh, super saturated with nitrogen. So the conclusion from this slide is that no nitride formation. They are, just a nitrogen supersaturated solid solution phase. 
Now let's look at the mechanical property. Uh, this is just the hardness and the Young's modulus. They all show, we can see all five coatings, they all show high hardness, but none of them show a uh, surface crack after the indentation. It's a spherical nano indentation. And we didn't observe any surface crack for all the samples. But from the cross-sectional SEM image, we cut the indents using the fit. We can see that the sample with the highest nature in the N20 shows some lateral crack. It's not very clear here, but indicated by the arrows. Well, the others showed no, no crack, and at the same time, they show large deformability. Uh, we also looked at the H over E ratio. This H over E ratio is an indicator of resistance against the elastic strain failure, which has a good approximation to rank the fracture toughness of hot coatings. As we can see from, it's a HB type plot. And this point is N15. It has the um, highest, uh, it, it has very high hardness value, which is comparable to ceramics. Uh, as we can see, this hardness is around 20. We know the hardness of titanium nitride is around 20. So, uh, it's not yet nitride. This N15, it's a uh, it's still a metal coating, but its hardness is comparable to ceramics. And at the same time, it didn't show any cracks. It showed large plasticity. We know that titanium nitride is quite brittle, right? So that means this one is not only strong, but also tough. A way uh, what is the deformation mechanism that governs the plasticity? How can the coating sample deform the plasticity with such a high nitrogen content? Uh, to understand the deformation mechanism, we compare the microstructure before and after non indentation. And for the FCC structure, we, we select two samples. One is the N4 with the FC structure, the other one is the N15 with, uh, with both FCC and HCP, HCP structure. So for the FCC structure sample N4 with a relatively low nitrogen content, we see that after deformation, extensive deformation twins were observed in the deformed sample, right? As can be seen in both low mag and atomic scale stem image. So that means the deformation twinning happens during the deformation. And for another sample N15, the dual phase one, the highly deformed region show a predominant HCP phase. So from a dual phase to a single phase, that means uh, all the FCC phase has gone. So that indicates the FCC phase has transformed to HCP during the formation. Uh, although we have at a high content of nitrogen, the high entropy alloy still can deform plastically like pure metallic material. When its ability uh, to, when, its ability to undergo large plastic deformation combined with the massive solid solution strengthening caused by uh, the high nitrogen intake, the material show excellent combination of hardness and toughness. So it's a quick summary of this study. Um, now we understand that nitrogen has strong effect on phase stability and the deformation mechanism. It's possible to apply yeah, or it can also be carbon or oxygen. And the massive solid solution stem from the high nitrogen intake provides high hardness. More importantly, even at high nitrogen content, 
they still have the ability to deform plastically, like a pure metallic material. They, they can show deformation twinning and the phase transformation. So therefore, uh, they show high hardness and also high toughness. Um, as we increase the nitrogen content, there may exist a sweet point at which we achieve the best synergy of hardness and toughness. And it may not be this one, the N15. We think it will be more efficient if we can use theoretical calculation to get the design of this metastable high triple coating. So if anyone is working on uh, the theoretical calculations or simulations, uh, we are happy to collaborate. So uh, next I'd like to quickly show you another example of mass stability engineering, dual phase transformation. In the previous study, the phase transformation is one step. And in this case, it's two step phase transformation. Now let's have a look. Uh, this time we choose to work on chromium cobalt nickel medium in triple alloy. This is because according to theoretical calculation, the phase, uh, the FCC phase observed in both chromium cobalt nickel alloy is the metastable phase. So which was retained by quenching from high temperature. We know that magnetron sputtering is the low temperature process and the staking for the energy of chromium cobalt nickel is pretty low or even negative according to the theoretical calculation. So it will allow us to form the, um, the dual phase structure, both FCC and HCP. And also the deposition rate here is also very important because uh, the higher the deposition rate, the higher the possibility that you form uh, planar defects like twin boundary and uh, stacking forwards. So here is the structural feature of this coating. We can see they have structural feature at a multiple length scale. Right? Such a hierarchical structure allows for a unique combination of a variety of strengthening mechanisms at a multiple length scale. So the combination of this strengthening mechanism will give us the exceptional high strength and ductility. So as a result of the hierarchical microstructure and also the dual phase, uh, the chromium cobalt nickel alloy coating that we have developed to show excellent strength ductility synergy. So the mechanical performance was characterized by in situ micropellar compression test. As we can see, ultra high strength of 4.2 gigapascal was achieved. What does that mean? We can compare this one with the box sample. So we have the box single crystal sample. That is the same composition. We can see the strength has been increased by six times. So it's six times stronger. And with such a high strength, the nanostructured chromium cobalt nickel alloy coating, they still show appreciable ductility, as we can see from this stress strain curve. Uh, we found this alloy shows a very interesting deformation mechanism. That's the most important thing of this study. It's dual phase transformations. Basically, what we have done is um, after this micropellar compression, we prepare a TM sample of the deformed pillar. And in that pillar, we see this shear band. And then we analyze the phase structure at different strength level. So uh, if you're close to a shear band, uh, the region has experienced the larger shear strain. So we check the phase structure in these four regions. Then we found that the material has experienced the two-step phase transformations. 
from FCC to HCP and then back to FCC. What is the benefit of dual phase transformation? We know that a single step phase transformation produces 35% plastic strain, but dual phase transformation will produce 70% plastic strain, which has been doubled. Right? That means the material's ability to absorb strain energy has been significantly increased. So that's a reason why uh, this coating shows such a high strains and at the same time show larger plasticity because it can deform plastically. And in our following study, we introduced the uh, dual phase transformation to a BCC structure high entropy alloy through interstitial cold doping. But as it but this time the uh, the interstitial elements is at very low content. Our BCC structure high entropy alloy shows an excellent combination of strength and ductility. We can see from this bare shape of the compressed micropillar. And where does this ductility come from? It's just from this two step phase transformation from BCC to HCP to FCC. So, okay, uh, to sum up. So, this talk, we mainly, we mainly focus on the metastability engineering approach. So what we do is we promote the formation of metastable phase structures, such as the FCC and HCP dual phase structure. And we want to trigger the phase transformation and the deformation twinning. because uh, the rapid quenching effect can surpri surprise the uh, can surprise the diffusion and promote the mass stable phase formation. With a mass stable uh, mass stability engineering, we need to form the mass stable phase first, right? Um, another important thing, if you want to make the phase mass stable, the composition is very important. So in the first study, we tune the phase stability by adding interstitial elements. In our study, it's a high uh, content of nitrogen. And the magnetron sputtering allow us to dissolve a high content of nitrogen without the formation of nitride. That is uh, the benefit of the magnetron sputtering. And also uh, in the second study, the chromium cobalt nickel one. So we picked that composition because it's low stacking for the energy. So we don't need to add any other interstitial elements because itself the energy is low enough. So if you want to design something um, mass stable, you need to focus on the fit stability and the stacking for the energy. Uh, that's all for today. If you have any question, uh, I got my email in the first slides. So you're welcome to communicate through email. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, at the end, I would like to acknowledge all my collaborators. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can send me a message or send me an email. Thank you, everyone.